Is anybody actually good at remembering names? Good for you. <laughs> this speech is for the rest of us. <laughs> a lot of people say they have a hard time remembering names. A lot of people say it goes in one ear, in, out the other ear. For me, it doesn't even get that far. I don't know if you're familiar with American television, this convention that we have, that when somebody says a bad, vulgar word on TV, you don't want the kids to hear that, so there's this guy who presses the beep button. So you just hear beep. So for me, it's like I've got one of those guys in my head. When somebody introduces themselves, they say, hi, my name's Beep. And I, don't, I don't even hear this. That's a big disadvantage. And this was a situation that I had a couple months ago. I was at some networking event in Prague. Imagine the situation. You've probably been there yourselves. You walk into a room, there's 100 people in a crowded bar. You kind of stand on the periphery, you look for somebody you know. And I found somebody I kind of knew. I walked over to him, I said hi. We said hi, we shook hands, and he was talking to three women. And he introduced me. He said, hi, this is Jana, Lenka, and Katka. I said, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> they continued their conversation. Um, I don't know what they're talking about. I wasn't that interested. I was kind of doing this thing and checking out the room with my peripheral vision, maybe orbiting the planets with my thoughts, and just not really focused. But then, all of a sudden, Katka said something, which immediately focused me, brought me back to the conversation. She said, Brian, what do you do for a living? Not such a brilliant question, but what she did was, she used my name. She used my name, and she remembered my name. Everybody loves their name. Everybody loves to hear their name. I'm no different. She had my attention. She used my name. And also, she had my respect because, as I know, as we all know, it's not easy to remember names. She did it. And I was reminded of how it's not easy to remember names because immediately after she said Ryan, I started thinking, crap, what is her name? <laughs> so she had my attention and she had my respect. This is the power of remembering somebody's name. And now I will tell you my formula, which I've lately been developing, which is working pretty well so far, for remembering names quickly. And it is visualize, connect, and repeat. VCR. Convenient acronym. If you go back in time, your thoughts, remember before DVD players, these big things, cassettes, you put them in the machine, they made a noise, VCR. Okay. Step number one, visual. Whoever says they have a hard time remembering names, usually it's not the same with faces. It's easier to remember faces. Would you agree? Most people, no? Okay. Most people would say it's a little easier to remember faces. In general, what we can see, we remember. It's just easier to remember things. Part of the reason is we're just born this way, we're constructed this way. A bigger part of our brain is devoted for processing, remembering visual information more than any of the other senses. Language teachers, language programs know this. They tell you to remember pictures and not words. Rosetta Stone, for example. I was in the, another example, I was in the Comenius Museum in Malastrana a few weeks ago. A uh, famous Czech educator, hundreds of years ago, he knew the power of this. He created the first visual dictionary. So, pictures. We have an easier time to remember pictures. But a name is not a picture. It's a sound. It's auditory. So what do you do? The challenge is to think of what the name reminds you of. You can get better at it, but if you think hard enough, every name has a sound or something that can remind you of something visual. Example, the Czech name Milan. For me, I think of a mill. I take the first three letters, M-I-L-L, -L, and I think of a, a water mill. Big wooden wheel going through a river or a stream. If I hear the name Karel, I think of Charles IV, and I think of the statue next to Charles Bridge, where he's like, uh, he's got the crown, he's got some I don't know what it is. It's like a piece of paper, probably something important. He's got the smug look. So I can see this statue very clearly. I've seen it many times. And for Katka, 
I take the American pronunciation, Katka, and I think of a cat. Okay, so now we've got the visual. Step two, connecting. Connecting new information to old information. This is what learning is about. Advertisers know this. If you, again, reference to American television, if you hear a phone number on television, it's not the random sequence of events. They don't say call 1 800 832 They connect it to some letters, which in the old days on the keypad, the letters, the numbers were also, they had letters on there. It would spell something, so 1 800 get rich. It's a word, it's connected, it's something you know. This is also why stories are such fabulous vehicles for teaching. There's so many possibilities to connect the new information to the elements of the story. You take something unknown, you put it in a story, much, much easier to remember. So now we have the three images, the mill, the king, and the cat. How to connect them. Easy way is, you can just put them next to it. But it's a little harder to remember it if you want to remember something connected to emotional, something emotional. Make it vulgar, make it funny, make it absurd, make it ridiculous. So with Milan, I imagine that he got his belt caught in one of the buckets, and he's going around the, water, the middle like this. He's like plunging in the water, he's screaming, like, get me off this crazy thing. So as I'm talking, if I met him alone at a cocktail party, I would see him in my head doing this thing. <laughs> a little bit easier to remember now. If I'm talking to a Karel, I imagine that he's actually wearing a crown, that he's got a scepter, an orb, a sword, or whatever, a cape. As I'm talking to him, I'm seeing this. And for Katka, I could imagine her holding a cat, stroking a cat, maybe my childhood pet. Or better, imagine her with some whiskers, some cute little cat ears, and much easier to remember. Step three, repetition. Go back to your school days. When you learned something, when you took a class, was that enough? You took the test, you remembered it? No? Of course, you had to review, you had to revise. Long-term information, it needs repeated inputs, and the same with short-term information. So with names, um, Good way to do that is you can use the name immediately. You meet somebody, say Kaka, nice to meet you. Or you just simply ask them about their names. People love hearing their names, they love talking about themselves. Ask them to tell them, tell you about their name. Okay, three points, three methods. Getting back to my story, I finished the conversation with my friend and the three girls, and I wanted to go meet other people, so I said goodbye to the first woman. What was her name? Yeah. Okay, what was the second girl's name? Lenka. Wow, good memories. What was the third woman's name? Katka. Katka, okay. That was the one that was supposed to be a little bit easier to remember. I used the same tricks um, for remembering her there. So, VCR, happy remembering.